Yeah, we've got a tough road game. You know, it's really only the second true road game. You can kind of count the Gonzaga one. You know, that is pretty uh, pretty much a road game with the way the fans were and everything. But this is the second true road game with uh, Memphis being the first. So we've let our guys know we didn't play very well in the first road game uh, at Memphis. We've got to do better. We've got to come out ready to play a little bit better. We, we've made a huge point of emphasis on defense. You know, I thought our defense was much improved against Tennessee, but offensively we struggled a little bit. Defense, uh, Florida's defense, one of the best defenses in the country, so they're going to put a lot of pressure on our offense. You know, they turn people over a lot. You know, I feel like we've got good guard play, but we did struggle with some turnovers here, uh, you know, in the last game. So we, we've got to do a better job taking care of the ball against their uh, pressure defense. I, I feel like Florida's Offense, you know, they, they feed off their defense quite a bit. You know, if, if our turnovers are down, I think it'll help our defense tremendously because they won't be scoring off their turnovers. So I think our defense starts with our offense taking care of the ball. And once we get that, I think we've had a really good uh, week of practice focusing on the defensive end. So looking forward to it. You know, Florida's a really good team. And I've only played down there once since I've been here. Uh, that was when we gave up the huge lead in the second half and didn't come away with a win. So, you know, if we go down there and close the game a little better, you know, obviously uh, we had a great start to it uh, down there before, but we need to play a full 40 minutes or 45 or 50, whatever it takes, uh, like it was the last time we were there. Thank you, Coach. Uh, let's start with Charlie Potter first. Yeah, hey, Coach. Um, I think you talked about it last week, but just going back to James Rojas, do you have a timetable for when you guys think you'll be able to to make an appearance in the game? You know what, he's participating in non-live drills in practice now, so I they're hoping two or three weeks, so uh, maybe middle of January, end of January, somewhere in there. I think it, it's going to de- somewhat be determined by you know how he looks once he gets into the lot and some of the live stuff but he's looked so he's looked good so far and all the non-live stuff he's done katie windham go ahead coach you've talked a lot lately about getting the defensive efficiency numbers back up um last game out against tennessee you know it was out, outside of the jacksonville state game the least you've given up since november um just what did you like about your defense in that game and kind of you said it's been good in practice this week um heading into your first road sec game yeah i mean i think the energy's been better you know like we chart all the same stats in practice we do in the games you know keon ellis has either led or been top two in our blue collar points the last two days in practice he was great again today you know just getting some guys to get back playing hard playing active I think Shackelford's been really good in practice uh, these last couple of days. You know, those are two of our better perimeter defenders. You know, our bigs have been, uh, you know, Noah's been a lot better here lately. And I thought Noah was really good against Tennessee. It'd be great if he came on strong in conference play. But just our overall general intensity on the defensive end, our, you know, I didn't think we were great in transition defense against Tennessee. We better put a big point emphasis on that. Florida scores a lot in transition, particularly off their turnovers. So, you know, we, we've done a better job of that, better job pressuring the ball. We need to force a lot more turnovers on our defensive end. We've tried to put a point emphasis on that without gambling and giving up layups because we don't want to compromise our defense, but we do need to play a little harder and force more turnovers. Mike Rodak. Just kind of from a logistics standpoint and trying to figure out, you know, how to travel when Florida cancels a game last week and then you have Missouri cancel a game yesterday because of COVID, just how do you figure out if you can travel, like what the whole timetable is and um, just secondary to that too, just what was kind of your view on, you know, the, the change in the SEC rule as far as not forfeiting games anymore that they made, I think it was two weeks ago now. Yeah. So I think the change in rules was due to the fact there was so many COVID cases were going up so much and, do you really want to punish a program that really couldn't have done much about it? I mean, it seems like some of these cases maybe are unavoidable at times. You know, I know Florida was just shut down. You know, I think they've done a really good job. You know, our trainer, Clark, I think is one of the best in the business. Their trainer down there is one of the most established, experienced, well-respected trainers in the business, and they're doing what they can. And, you know, it had been bad to – take a loss just because you had some unavoidable things that happened with COVID. So I understand why they changed the rules. I also 
understand why they had that rule in the first place. We don't want teams just sitting out games just because. So, you know, the coaches and the administration and the athletic trainers they all have to understand these games need to be played if at all possible. So, you know, we played our full allotment of games last year. We were one of the few teams in the country that played a, as many games as you could possibly play last year. We um, we didn't shut down, miss any games due to our own stuff. You know, obviously the Houston game got switched to Western Kentucky last year because of things they had going on. I think our trainers done a good job. And, you know, but that doesn't guarantee that you're not going to have COVID in your program. You're still going to have some cases. And, you know, our players are – every player that's eligible has got the booster shot. You know, we're doing what we can on our end to make sure that we don't have a shutdown. But – you know what happened? So I think, uh, and then to address the travel situation, you have to plan on playing the games that are in front of you. So we planned on the Florida trip. We got it all together. And if our, you know, ops people, you know, Alex, our director of operations, if she gets a whole trip plan and it gets canceled last minute, she, it's kind of part of the business, you know. Her and Adam, Adam's done it a lot. We've got some experienced people on staff with that. If they've got to throw together a trip last minute, We've had to do that before, too, in the last two years. So we, they, they're, they're good at their job. They, they know what they're doing. We're planning on playing Missouri. You know, we've talked to them. You know, I think they're going to have enough players out of protocol. But, you know, and I think it's good, too, the uh, SEC's following the CDC guidelines. And, we're you know, we've got five days instead of ten now. I know some leagues are still at the ten, which, you know, doesn't make much sense being that, you know, most – Everybody in the program is vaccinated. The CDC has made those recommendations, and and that's what the SEC has gone with. So I think you're able to get guys back faster and lose less games when you do get COVID cases. But we're planning on playing the Missouri game, and if something happens where they're not able to play or, you know, we'll make the last-minute changes if possible. I mean, we shoot, we had the Davidson game get thrown together in less than 24 hours, and they were able to make the trip. So I think teams are – aware of the fact that they've got to be fluid and flexible with their schedule, and we are too. Austin Hannon. Hey, Coach, you've obviously had some issues with big guys this year. How much is it a point of concern about Colin Castleton on Wednesday night? Yeah, it's a major concern. I mean, he's our leading scorer and rebounder. We've had major problems stopping uh, interior players that play with some type of physicality. I do think it's good Noah's been playing better. You know, we've been trying to give some other bigs a chance. Um, Ken Ambrose playing hard, decent practice, but you know Charles has to do better for us. He's got to do a better job guarding, and he's done a great job with his help defense. He's got to get a little bit stronger to actually guard his own matchup in the post better. Now that we're in the SEC, and we're got to do a little bit better job helping him out when he's you know outmanned in there. But you know I think Noah's a little stronger and played a little better, so we, we may mix our coverages up on him, mix our matchups up on him, and. But he's a concern for sure. I mean, he's a really talented player. He's really good. He's in the, good in the post. He's good in the mid post. He's good facing the basket. So I'm going to have to figure out ways to cover him in multiple uh, areas on the floor. Okay, we got three more questions in the queue, so we're going to finish with these three questions. Let's start with Michael Browner first. Hey, Coach. Uh, in a game like the Tennessee game, now here with you know back-to-back -back road games and, and tough environments here, when, when shots just – aren't falling really like, like they weren't for, you know, 35, 36 minutes against Tennessee. Uh, you know, what kind of adjustments can, can you really make in game, whether it be on, on the offensive or, or defensive end to kind of counteract that? Yeah. I mean, defensively, we're just going to stay with what we do and just realize that our defense kept us in the game and it allowed us to win the game when we weren't making threes for, like you said, about 35 minutes of that game against Tennessee offensively, you know, I, can you post up to mismatches more? Maybe. You know, and I think Noah's starting to play better now. Noah's probably our best post up guy. So can you get him the ball? I thought Noah played great for us. If you know he didn't play the way the way he did against Tennessee, we wouldn't have won the game. And, you know, he was able to drive the ball a little bit more. So whether you get some more drives, some more slashing uh opportunities, some more post up opportunities to try to create some more at the rim opportunities, you know, you look at that a little bit and then some of it is you know we we play the way we're going to play and I didn't want our shooters passing up open shots and if we'd made a bunch of major adjustments we probably want to hit those three threes we we hit that won us the game in the last few minutes of Tennessee game so 
you know, we're just going to tell our guys, if, if you're open, you're a shooter, we're not passing up shots. And told Keon and Shaq both that, and they both hit, you know, Keon hit two big threes, and Shaq hit, Shaq hit a big three late in that game. And I think eventually, with as good as shooters as we have, they're, they're not going to stay cold forever. And Shaq's been really hot in practice. Keon Ellis has been making a lot of shots. Quinterly's starting to make shots at a lot higher rate in practice. So I anticipate us shooting the ball a little bit better here moving forward. Uh, we have a follow-up from Charlie. Go ahead, Charlie. Hey, Coach, you just mentioned Noah and, and how he's coming off with his best game in an Alabama uniform. Have you seen something click with him, or was it just a matter of you know time for him to kind of have a performance like that? You know, a little bit of both. I think he needed some time to adjust to the way we play and our style and our pace. And I also think you know he's able to figure out where his shots are coming from in the offense, when he should drive. You know, I thought he was taking too many threes at one point, even some like – stepping out of his shot instead of being spotted up, stepping in. Now it seems like when he doesn't have his feet ready to shoot when it's coming, he's driving the ball, which is what he should have been doing. He's figuring out when he's supposed to drive, when he's supposed to shoot. And I think he had some really good drives against Tennessee that you know created some good offense for us. And I think he got to some back down opportunities that he was a lot more aggressive in that he had, you know, we know, we've known he's a good post-up player, especially when he's, backing the guy down. He just hasn't gotten to him as often as we'd like to, and not, now he did, and I thought he was much more aggressive in him. So, you know, I, I think he's starting to figure out where his opportunities are coming from in our offense. He's playing a lot better. All right, we'll finish up with Mike. I think you mentioned last night that Shaq's the only guy who didn't play in that, or that did play in that Florida game uh, two years ago um, down in Gainesville. Just how do you guys get ready for that environment, you know, especially since it was different than last year when – Everything was at thirty percent capacity. Yeah, I mean, maybe a little high. I the environment was pretty good two years ago. I mean, we were what were we up twenty two? I think at one point, they they made the big comeback and their crowd got behind them there late in the game and overtime and you know. So I I mean, the SEC is really good athletic league with a lot of tough environments to play in. So. I think it's good we've already played at Memphis. So they had a good environment there. It's good we played out in Seattle against Gonzaga. There's a lot of pro-Gonzaga fans out there in Seattle. So I, I think our guys are used to it. Sometimes it's more satisfying to you know, quiet a uh, road crowd than it maybe even to get excited with a home crowd at home. I mean, so kind of see what some of these guys are made of. Shaq, it, it's correct, though. I think Shaq's the only one that's played at Florida on the current roster, you know, outside of some walk-ons, you know, BJ and Tyler, but so it'll be, uh, it'll be fun. It'll be, hopefully they pack the place out. I like playing in nice arenas that are packed out. It'll be a bit of fun environment for us. All right. Thank you, coach.